Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimlich's History. Now, we've been going through Unit 4 of the AP Government Curriculum, and in this video, that means it's time to talk about political socialization. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, well, then let's get to it. So in this video, here's what we're trying to do. Explain how cultural factors influence political attitudes and socialization. So the real question here is, how is it that you and I come to believe in one political ideology or another? And as much as I'd like to tell you that all Americans form their political beliefs by spending hundreds of hours poring over complex works of political science and delving into to the depths of various primary documents of our national and constitutional origins? Eh, no. There are a few people who do that, but in general, most of us form our political opinions based on humbler factors, and the process by which we form our political opinions is called political socialization. So let's talk about the six factors that work together in our political socialization. First and foremost is the family, and many studies have borne out the truth that children will often hold the same or similar political opinions held by their parents. For example, it probably won't surprise you to know that politics is often a discussion around the Heimler dinner table, and my children pick these things up, maybe without even knowing it. So if you asked my six-year-old son which political party deserves our vote, then you would no doubt hear this. Uh, that's complicated. Yes, that is the right answer, my son. I'm raising him right. In fact, in 2002, Christopher Aiken published a study demonstrating that while experienced adult voters considered a variety of factors when it came to how they voted, younger voters casting their ballots for the first time almost always relied on the political ideology they picked up from their parents. Now, I should say that since the advent of social media, this connects has shown some signs of weakening, but even so, the family remains the biggest early influence on people's political ideology. Okay, the second factor in political socialization is schools, and though there is no wealth of evidence that suggests that students become more conservative or more liberal as a result of being in a K-12 class, it does have the potential to shape how a student thinks about politics and therefore the world. There are some classes, like AP government or a civics class, that directly shape how a student thinks about politics. But again, back to the point I just made, these classes usually don't make a student more conservative or more liberal, even with direct exposure to these modes of thought. But there are also other factors in school that, while not directly engaging students in political socialization, do influence their political beliefs nonetheless. In this day and age, it is the history classroom that has created a political firestorm. For example, in 2019, the New York Times released something called the 1619 Project, which was a series of resources that argued the following. Every American institution is tainted with racism because everything was built, whether politically, economically, or socially, on the institution of slavery. And some teachers use this material in their history classes. Well, as you probably know, such an interpretation of U.S. history is politically contentious, to say the least. Such a perspective grows out of a liberal, liberationist mindset which seeks to challenge the dominant historical narrative and uplift the voices and actions of those who have been historically oppressed. And you can imagine that as a student, if you were taught this, it would have an influence on your political ideology. Well, in response to this, conservatives formed the 1776 Commission and produced resources that explained U.S. history through a different lens. U.S. history was not something to be ashamed of, they argued, but rather something to be proud of. Yes, Americans have had their blemishes, but ultimately American history is filled with progress and the advancement toward ever more freedom and democracy. And by contrast, you can see that if this was the version of history you were taught, it would have an influence on your political ideology in the opposite direction. So schools, both in direct and indirect ways, influence our political socialization. A third factor in our political socialization is our interaction with peers. Social conformity plays a huge role in what a person believes. Like, if your peers all hold to political ideology X and you hold to political ideology Y, there is a huge amount of social pressure, even if it's not direct, to conform your beliefs to the peer group. A fourth factor in our political socialization is the media. Spending so much time in front of screens has given people of all ages, but especially young people, more access to a wide range of viewpoints. Almost daily we see people saying things in the public square that shapes the way we think about politics, and we also see people getting cancelled for offensive statements, and that can have a way of convincing us that we don't want to be on the other side of that counseling, and so we adjust our beliefs and language accordingly. Additionally, with the rise in the last 20 years of cable news, we've seen a tremendous increase in conservative and liberal pundits who tell us with authority exactly how we should think about everything that happens. And look, as long as I have any platform to stand on, I will always warn anyone who listens to me to be very wary of those pundits. They are, first and foremost, entertainers, and they care very little about presenting the world in all its complexity as it actually is. Nevertheless, much to my chagrin, they have very large audiences and they are able to shape the way people think about politics. A fifth factor in political socialization is our participation in civic and religious organizations. An example of a civic organization would be the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts. The Boy Scouts organization was founded with the explicit mention to teach boys patriotism, courage, self-reliance, and kindred values. Now, since 1910 when that was written, the Scouts' commitment to patriotism has undergone some change, but nevertheless, if you're a Scout, it will affect the way you think about, to use their own language, God and 
and country. In other words, political socialization is happening in a civic organization like that. An example of a religious organization would be membership and attendance in a church or a synagogue or a mosque. Now, all religious organizations vary in terms of their political beliefs. You've got liberal churches and conservative churches, liberal synagogues and conservative synagogues, liberal mosques and conservative mosques. But the point is, whatever political ideology is joined to the organization's religious belief is the political ideology the congregation will be hearing about week after week, and that has an influence. For example, evangelical Christian churches saw a significant shuffling of members during the COVID-19 pandemic. Some churches, when they reopened, required masks in order to participate in worship, and that offense was all it took for many members to reject what they thought of as overt liberal political socialization and choose another church that aligned more with their political beliefs. And the sixth factor in political socialization is globalization. By definition, globalization is the increasing interconnectedness of the world by means of economic partnerships. And let me hasten to add, that is a very basic definition, but it'll do for our purposes. However, along with those economic connections come political influences as well. Like, in a globalized world, we are all influenced by factors well beyond our borders. For example, through immigration, people bring their cultural ideas to bear on the political culture of the United States. Immigrants from Asian countries have a much stronger sense of the good of the community above the individual, and as they immigrate to America, that value can run counter to our strong belief in the triumph of the individual. Even so, in some cases, such a belief might take root and affect a person's political socialization. Okay, thanks for watching. Click right here to grab a view packet if you want help getting an A in your class and a 5 on your exam in May. If this video helped you and you want me to keep making them, then lean on your YouTube socialization and subscribe, and that will let me know that you want me to keep making them. Heimler out.